So Dragon Quest Builders 2 came out at the end of last week, and I was initially hesitant to pick this one up, considering it came out so soon after Super Mario Maker 2, and while both those games are very different, I felt like because of the amount of time I was spending in Super Mario Maker 2, uh, especially building levels, which um, I didn't think would be something I enjoyed, but Super Mario Maker 2 just makes it so easy. It's it's so fun to build levels in that game. Um, but you, it, I mean, well, at least it's fun for the first few hours and then it can get kind of tedious. Uh, so I felt like coming out of that, what I didn't want to do is buy a new game where I was expected to build things out of my own, you know, imagination or creativity. Um, not like I, you know, I don't in, not enjoy doing that. I just felt like the buffer between those two games wasn't enough. And I was going to happily wait maybe a month or two to pick up Dragon Quest Builders. But I did have that two game voucher thing from Nintendo and my original plan was to get Super Mario Maker 2 and Dragon Quest Builders 2. Uh, it, if you don't know what that voucher is, uh, Nintendo offers a deal for um, 99 US dollars. You can get a voucher for two Switch games uh, and it's from a list, but it's, it covers most major Switch release. I think it's a pretty good deal. You save, what, like 20 bucks or so, depending on where you're buying the game and taxes and that stuff. But uh, I picked up the $100 voucher and got Super Mario Maker 2 and Dragon Quest Builders 2. But this video is focusing on Builders 2, and uh, throughout this video I'm going to reference Builders 1 versus Builders 2. It's going to be easier for me to say than having to say the full name, otherwise I'm just going to stumble over my words and I'm going to sound like an idiot. Now if you're unfamiliar with what the Builders games are, imagine if you took Dragon Quest and Minecraft and mashed them together. You have all the character and world design and audio from Dragon Quest with many of the gameplay elements from Minecraft. So that means all the construction, and destruction, crafting, combat, it's all pretty influenced by Minecraft I'd say. And that's going to be a common through line as well throughout this video is the comparison between Minecraft and Builders. It's almost impossible not to compare the two because they're so directly linked. I'll try not to make it too much of a trend, but I'll mention it throughout this video a few times. I'll start with two of the biggest changes I noticed from the first game, and that is the ability to sprint and the ability to go into first person. Being able to run around the map is not only easier for travel, but it just feels like it should have been in the game to begin with. You have a stamina bar now, which is directly linked to your food meter as well. So the more you're sprinting, the more actions you're doing, the more you're getting hungry, and so that needs to be managed along with your health. As you level up from defeating monsters in the world, you'll gain more health and a longer stamina bar. Going first person also is another thing I feel like should have been in the first game. It feels so right with this game, and it also kind of fixes one of the major issues that I experienced in the first game, and that is with building fully completed structures. So in Builders 1, one of the problems I ran into right away is that as I was building structures, houses, whatever, uh, I was experiencing a problem where when I would walk into them, you know, because I would build a roof over them or build multi-level, you know, structures, uh, the camera would get stuck or it would have trouble finding my character. It was almost like the game didn't want you to build multi-level structures or structures that had roofs on them. And that's exactly what one of my first instincts was, was to build a castle, essentially, with my first town in Builders. I wanted to create something that had enough protection from the monsters that would invade. And I thought, what better than to build a multi-floored castle where I can have residents sleep on the middle and top floor, and the bottom just be reserved for, like, kitchen, you know, utilities and things like that. And throughout the construction of said castle, I was having a hard time navigating due to the camera problems. And now in Builders 2, given that you can go first person, it means you can navigate your hallways of your castles, your buildings, and not have to worry about the camera getting stuck on things or freaking out. So two big changes that I'm very happy about, first person and sprint. Hurrah. A major difference between Builders and Minecraft is that when you start a game of Minecraft, you're given no direction, no time limits, no quests. You're free to do whatever you want at the time you want to do it. Whereas in Builders, it's pretty much a linear game where you start from point A to point B and construct your towns along the way, but you do follow quest lines, you do tasks for your villagers that join your town. So there's a lot more structure than Minecraft, which I welcome. I actually like it quite a bit. They do a really fantastic job in Builders 2, uh, way better than the first game, I think, in terms of getting you engaged with your town. 
They really emphasize farming like right away. It's one of the first things you really start working on. And part of that is managing your crops. You know, uh, we have all played farming simulators, whether they be as simple as something like a Facebook game or way up to farming simulator and everything in between. You know, we've all had that experience. And what's uh, very common between those games is that you get this sense of uh, incentive to manage your crops, right? You want to be active you want to make sure you're picking them at the right time make sure you're harvesting correctly you've planted things right and i've played about 15 hours of builders 2 and pretty much all of that 15 hours has been focused on farming and this is super different from the first game in which you just focused on kind of building your town and building out specific rooms for your villagers and i think this change was needed because like i said it brings that extra level of engagement with your village and you just start to feel more connected sooner to the environment you're creating for the villagers that are joining you. So within that first 15 hours or so that I've played, I was able to get a nice little farm going and have uh, stru some structures built, some security from the monsters that invade. I, I feel pretty good about the way my farm's looking right now, but I'm excited to expand. And th this is also something I want to bring up that is a mood change over the first game and that's just at one point I began to just not really care about how the castle that I was building in the first game looked uh, it became kind of cluttered and messy and that generally made me feel bad about what I had done I I just uh, I didn't like to look at it and uh, it made me walk away from the game for a bit actually is I, I just grew disinterested with uh, trying to manage this castle that I uh, had clumsily built um, and having this bright, airy farm in Builders 2, th that experience has been much more enjoyable for me. A new mechanic that's introduced is the ability to use this bottomless water jug to grab water from various sources and then use it to build uh, like small ponds or lakes or whatever you want to do with water, much like you would use a water bucket in Minecraft to create pools or, or you know, do whatever you want to do. Now, I actually found this thing pretty difficult to use. It, it's easy if you're building a simple pond or building a simple pool of water, but I tried to build a moat around a part of my village uh, to prevent monsters from coming in because it seems like monsters always spawn on one side of your village, one chosen side. And uh, I tried to build a moat that they would just fall into, but not only did the moat fail because I couldn't get the water to uh, line up correctly in the, in the area chosen, um, it didn't pool together, uh, the, it, the mechanics for the water are kind of clumsy and clunky, um, but the monsters just avoided it anyway and don't take water damage or, or don't need to breathe, I guess, uh, so they can just sink in the water and just stand there, forcing me to jump down and attack them. So, moat failed, uh, I wouldn't go for that. But if you've had trouble also using the water in certain, certain circumstances, let me know in the comments, because. It seems like something uh, that maybe they didn't flesh out completely. Uh, it seems like there are parts of it that don't work as intended. And one thing that I haven't tried yet is you can actually play Builders 2 in co-op mode, uh, which was not in the first game. It was an entirely single player experience, and so Builders 2 now has co-op, which again, kind of feels like something should have been in the original game. So like I said, I haven't tried it, but I think where it fits in is that now you always have a companion with you uh, as you're exploring the world and doing things. Uh, and if you're just playing in single player, this is an AI controlled character. Um, they don't build anything for you, but they will fight, uh, attack enemies on your behalf. They will, if they notice you are chopping down trees or gathering materials, they'll also do the same. So they kind of react to whatever you're doing. And I imagine that when you play co-op, uh, your co-op companion takes over that role. I could be wrong, uh, I haven't looked into it, but I, I think that's what it is. But I'm excited to try that out, I think we'll do some videos on the channel, uh, probably a buddy dungeon or something playing this. An issue that has come up in a lot of reviews for this game, and I've seen talk about it, is that the loading times and the frame rate on Switch isn't that great. And I will say that I didn't notice anything at first, but however, uh, I did begin to notice that the load times are kind of disguised in the game. It's interesting how they do it, actually, uh, and I maybe this is what people were talking about specifically, but there are moments when you have like new followers join your village or uh, you accomplish a certain task where it gives you like a menu bar at the bottom that says, hooray, you've accomplished this or these people are joining you, and then it kind of just like hangs there for a minute, like longer than it should. 
Uh, and I think that this is a disguised loading screen. At least it feels that way. It, it just feels like you are way too long waiting for this thing to clear. And the frame rate, I honestly haven't experienced much of an issue with. It seems to be steady at 30 frames on Switch. There were a couple moments where it dipped, but I imagine that it gets worse later in the game maybe, where more enemies are on screen. But so far I haven't really encountered any game breaking issues or anything that I would notice or particularly pick out. Another huge improvement and probably the biggest improvement, I'm sure a lot of people are happy about this, is that your bag in which you uh, carry items as you're walking around is gigantic now. Um, you have your quick inventory which you see at the bottom of the screen and then you have your travel bag which is seems endless like I've gotten nowhere near putting uh, it close to filling it up. It seems like it'll go on forever uh, which means you technically don't need to use chests at all. You have like a bottomless bag which is cool. So yeah, I'm enjoying the hell out of this game right now. It's super cute, it's charming, the combat is decent, uh, it's not anything spectacular, but it works for this setting. It's Dragon Quest and Minecraft together, that's an awesome concept, and it just works, and it works a lot better than Builders 1. One thing I wish they would have expanded on, and maybe we'll see this in future Builders games if they continue, is that I, it would have been really cool to see like a class option. This is a very common thing in RPGs, JRPGs specifically, where as you evolve your character, as you level them up, you can point them in a certain direction. So maybe while you're playing Builders 2, you really like the farming aspect. So maybe, you know, you could build your character out to be a better farmer over than combat or crafting or or other things. That's a broad concept and they would need to do a lot to the mechanics of the game to make that work, but Nonetheless, I think it would be a very cool addition and possibly something we can think about for the future games. But for now, Dragon Quest Builders 2 is a excellent farm sim, Minecraft-esque action RPG, whatever you want to call it. It's a lot of things and it does most of those things very well. If you're into any of them, you will find enjoyment with this game, I promise you. Those are quick impressions of the first 15 hours I've played of Builders 2. Let me know in the comments what you think of the game so far, if you picked it up, if you aren't picking it up. If so, why is that? Please let me know. I look forward to hearing from you, and I'll see you in the next video.